Yeah. Getting nicked out here, yeah. Mike. Oh, could I bum a cigarette? But, uh, 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 editor. Every time I go like this for the whole weekend, put night <laughs> on. Mike Tyson has been making secret moves into Jake Paul's hiding place, and he's brought out one more controversial detail. Jake Paul has been using illegal meds. I've been, um, I haven't drank, uh, took drugs in six days. And for me, that's a miracle. I've been lying to everybody else to think I was sober, but I'm not. This is my sixth day. I'm never going to use again. <laughs> Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever come into- Tyson has been acting as the special secret service agent assigned to investigate Jake Paul, and he's been doing his job perfectly. Now, he's brought up another revelation about the problem child, and it's one that could see Jake Paul receive some very severe punishments from authorities. If that happens, then the anticipated bout between them would be a short-lived dream that won't live to see the day. Let's dive right in. The drama does not seem to be stopping anytime soon, as events continue to unfold ahead of the much-anticipated fight between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson on July 20th at the AT&T Stadium. The fight between Paul and Tyson has been themed with controversy right from the time it was officially announced, and in the build-up to July 20th, events continue to unfold, some even sending shockwaves to everyone in the boxing world. Jake Paul, he keeps saying he wants to fight you. Do you want to fight him? That could be very interesting. It could be interesting. <laughs> actually want to do? He's skilled enough, yes, I'm gonna give it to him, he's skilled enough, because he's winning. Uh-huh. You you, even if he's fighting guys, you A lot of issues have arisen following Jake Paul and Mike Tyson's decision to go head-to-head. -head. First, it was the amount of money involved, with many claiming the match is a scripted one. And secondly, it was the age difference between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, with an over 30-year age gap existing between the two fighters. Now, another controversial issue has sprung up as Mike Tyson has now accused his opponent for his upcoming match, Jake Paul, of using illegal meds. Mike Tyson, in a recent interview, made this shocking allegation against Jake Paul, and according to him, Jake Paul has been using these medications to get the better of fighters he's faced in the past and is currently planning on using the same for their upcoming match on July 20th. According to Tyson, Paul is doing everything possible to win the fight on the 20th of July and is now resorting to the use of a drug matching the description of Amphipramoni in order to stay in shape for the upcoming boxing match. Amphipramoni, also known as diethylpropion, diethylcathinone is one of the drugs listed on the World Anti-Doping Agency's banned list and it is a stimulant that performs several functions, though there is a high possibility of the drug being abused. The drug is however believed to have some good effects as it is used for the control of lifestyle and dietary changes. Also, it is approved for the treatment of obesity, though it is not allowed for use by boxers and other sportsmen. This revelation by Tyson on Jake Paul's use of illegal medications came up in response to some recently released footage of Jake Paul in training. This little white boy, where is he getting all the strength and energy to do all these routines from I think he's on some wild band substance? The guy can't box, he can't fight, he's such a lazy ass, you can see his rapid body changes, these things aren't natural, he must be on one of these illegal diet regulation meds cause I tell you what, there's no way a boxer gets to this level of fitness within such a time frame. I saw him before we signed the contract and now, it's just a few weeks after we've signed the contract, look at the crazy changes! Amphepramone does fit into the description Tyson gave in that interview, and if it is factually correct that Jake Paul is on that substance, then it might spell doom for him. If he is found to be in use of the banned substance before the match, it would most likely lead to a cancellation and call-off, and it could be worse if a doping test is carried out after the match and he's found guilty of using any banned substance. A ban could likely come his way. Jake Paul, who was merely a YouTuber and an internet celebrity, just came into professional boxing a few years ago, and he's yet to convince majority of boxing fans that he's good enough to be categorized amongst the elite fighters of this era, as he has more often than not picked his fights against boxers who are way past their prime. He's been acting like he's skilled enough. Yes, Ima give it to him. He's skilled enough because he's got drugs to keep him winning. Even if he's fighting guys that you guys don't believe are good enough fighters, he keeps using drugs to beat them. Mike Tyson said of his upcoming opponent in an interview, Paul, he keeps saying he wants to fight you. Do you want to fight him? 
That could be very interesting. It could be interesting. <laughs> Actually want to do? He's skilled enough, yes. I'm gonna give it to him. He's skilled enough because he's winning. Uh huh. You gotta, you gotta, even if he's fighting guys. Substance or drug abuse is something that is prevalent in boxing and sports as a whole, with the World Anti Doping Agency having to grapple yearly with athletes who fall in breach of doping regulations. Even Mike Tyson is not a saint when it comes to substance abuse, be it alcohol or banned substances. The former world champion struggled with drug and alcohol addiction at the latter stages of his career before later overcoming those addictions. I want to live a different life now. I want to live my sober life. I don't want to die. I'm on the verge of dying because I'm a vicious alcoholic, Tyson said in a press conference 10 years ago. I haven't taken drugs in six years and for me that's a miracle. I've been lying to everybody else that thinks I was sober but I'm not. This is my sixth year. I'm never going to use it again. Mike Tyson till date still talks about his past with drugs and alcohol addiction as he continues to set the example for so many young boxers and fans who look up to him. The drug test, you know, we could all beat cocaine, we could all beat cocaine drug testing. You have to stay away from it for three days or so. We could beat that, right? But for we, we got 45 days. Right? Yeah. We gotta wait 45 days in our system. And I think it stays in our system because it belongs there. We comes out, I mean, cocaine comes out because it doesn't belong there. Our body's trying to get rid of it. We do some cocaine, nigga, we shut down. Boom. It has venom in it. When you smoke it, once I tried it, boom. The only thing I was conscious about was out. My brain was still functioning, my thoughts. I could still talk to myself. I could hear my mind. And I killed myself just as if I'm dying. It's really mind-blowing. My whole life totally changed. It sounds like a movie script. I wake up. I'm smiling. I'm laughing. I say what the hell has happened. I had no idea. It lasts forever, but it was only 15 minutes. It felt like hours. It was frightening. Really, uh, my whole life totally changed. It sounds like a, a movie strip, a script, but it's really um, the real deal. At that moment, you're talking about like you come to and you are altered. You are altered and it stayed. Am. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I wake up. I'm happy. I'm laughing. I'm smiling. I think, what the f really what happened? Yeah, really. I had no idea. So sex, lasts, cocaine, lasts, championship belt, those forever. weren't happening. Nothing. No, it lasts forever. But it was only 15 minutes. But it felt like hours. Mm -hmm. It was frightening. Because when it comes to drug tests, we can all beat the cocaine. We can all beat the cocaine drug testing. You stay away from it for three days or so. We could beat that, right? But for weed, we got 45 days. We gotta wait 45 days in our system, and I think it stays in our system because it belongs there. Cocaine comes out because it doesn't belong there. Our body's trying to get rid of it. We do some cocaine, we shut down, boom. All of our systems shut down. We don't hear anything, we don't see anything. It's all an illusion. We don't hear, we don't see. We're on some energy we don't even know about. Test, you know, we could all beat the cocaine, we could all beat cocaine drug testing. You have to stay away from it for three days or so. We could beat that, right? But for we, we got 45 days. Yeah. yeah. We got to wait 45 days in our system. And I think it stays in our system because it belongs there. We comes out, I mean, cocaine comes out because it doesn't belong there. Our body's trying to get rid of it. We do some cocaine, nigga, we shut down. Boom. For a man like Mike Tyson, it's no surprise that he had to deal with alcohol and substance addiction at some point in his life and career. A tumultuous life filled with many challenges he's had to deal with. Right from his background, his growing up and having to start a career in boxing, Tyson has never had it easy. Apart from his boxing career, taking a close look into his family and personal life tells so many stories of what Tyson has faced, broken marriages, failed relationships, jail sentence amongst other challenges. One significant event that really shook Tyson was the death of his four-year-old daughter, Exodus, in 2010, and even Tyson admitted that he needed to get high in order to get over it. Now Mike Tyson is very much a changed person and is now more at peace with himself than ever before. Looking at his eyes when he recounts his past experiences depicts a man who has conquered significant battles to get to the level he currently is. Now Tyson keeps fit, gets involved in promotion of boxing, and continues to remain a role model to many both within and without boxing. As regards keeping fit, the upcoming fight between Jake Paul and Tyson has made Tyson up the tempo in the gym alongside his personal trainer, Rafael Cordero. But as pointed out earlier, some issues just refuse to go away. Issues like substance abuse and illegal meds have always been a hot topic as far as boxing is concerned. And ahead of a big match like Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson, it shouldn't be a surprise that it's being brought up. Several boxers in the past have either been banned or suspended in connection to use of illegal meds or doping breaches. 
In October 2022, an all-British catchweight bout between Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. was cancelled after traces of clomiphene was returned by Ben following a random test by the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association. Despite being cleared by the World Boxing Council about four months later due to a highly elevated consumption of eggs being considered reasonable explanation for the initial failed test, Conor Ben was charged in April 2023 by the UK Anti-Doping Agency in what was described as an exceptional circumstance for using clomiphene, a female fertility drug that is placed on the World Anti-Doping Agency's list of banned substance and also known to elevate testosterone levels in men. Ben, however, denied any wrongdoings as regards doping or substance abuse as he remained adamant that the fight with Eubanks Jr. was going to hold. I've not committed any violations. I've not been suspended. As far as I'm concerned, the fight is still going ahead. I've spoken to Chris personally, and we both want the fight to go ahead. We're both taking medical and legal advice. And as I said, we want the fight to happen for the fans, Ben said in reaction to his failed test. I've signed out to every voluntary anti-doping test. Throughout my whole career, I've been tested. You know, my UK test had come back negative throughout my whole career. I've never had any issues before. Even in the lead up to this fight, my test had come out negative, you know, so my team will find out as to why there's been an issue with adverse findings in my test. But as I said, as far as I'm concerned, the fight is still going ahead. I'm a clean athlete and we'd get to the bottom of this. Suspended, so as far as I'm concerned, the fight is still going ahead. Uh, I've spoken to Chris personally and we both want the fight to go ahead. We've both taken medical and legal advice. And as I said, we want the fight to happen for the fans. You know, I've signed up to every voluntary anti-doping testing there is under the sun throughout my whole career I'm tested despite Ben's comments the fight has still not been held till date as it is currently indefinitely postponed Ben did box in Florida last September after his provisional suspension was lifted by the independent national anti-doping panel but he's still unable to box in the UK as the British Boxing Board of Control and the UK anti-doping agency continue to stand their ground and were reported to have lodged an appeal against the decision to lift Ben's suspension. Also, due to the doping charges, the British Boxing Board of Control has refused to license any boxing event that would have Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. compete. Former British professional boxer Amir Khan also falls in the category of fighters who have failed a drug test recently. It was on the night he lost to arch-rival Kell Brook. February 19th, 2022, in a one-sided match in Manchester, United Kingdom. Khan had supplied a urine sample to an official from the UK Anti-Doping Agency, after which a positive test for Osterine was returned. Amir Khan thereafter was banned from all sport for a period of two years after he was found guilty of having Osterine, a banned performance-enhancing drug listed on the World Anti-Doping Agency's 2022 prohibited list as an anabolic agent which is also prohibited in sport at all times. Khan remains adamant that any intake of Osterine was not intentional as according to him, he has never cheated in his life. I've never cheated, I'm a retired fighter and at the same time, you can see by my performance. My performance against Kell Brook wasn't the best performance I had. I lost the fight. If I went in there and knocked Kell Brook down, it's different. I've never cheated in my life. I'm the one who wanted to do the testing on the fight, and also the amount that was in my system could have been by shaking people's hands. I've never cheated. I'm, I'm a retired fighter, and at the same time, um, you can see by my performance. My performance against Kell Brook wasn't the best performance I had. So in you the can, sense that you lost the fight. I lost the fight and obviously if I, if I went in there and knocked Kell Brook out, it's different. There are not many stories that better explains the effect of substance abuse or a failed drug test than that of Amir Khan. Getting a ban after the last fight of his career was a big blow to the legacy the British boxer struggled to build and maintain for 17 years. After making his first professional appearance in 2005 as a teenager, Khan showed a lot of promise and he had not ended in the way everyone who was him then had envisaged. And even more recently, another fighter who has suffered a similar fate as a result of failed drug test is Krzysztof Glowacki, who returned an adverse test for banned steroid. Boldenoni in January 2023, after his fight with Richard Riek Porhe in Manchester, UK. 
Boldenone is listed as an anabolic androgenic steroid by the World Anti-Doping Agency and prohibited in sport at all times, and following Glowacki, returning an adverse analytical finding for it, he was provisionally suspended by the UK Anti-Doping Agency and then charged with an anti-doping rule violations. In November 2023, the Polish boxer, who is a former WBO champion, was handed a four-year ban running from April 6, 2023. Several other boxers have had to deal with bans, suspensions, and other issues emanating from failed drug tests or substance abuse, including American professional boxer Eric Molina, who failed a drug test in 2018 after his fight with Anthony Joshua. Canelo Alvarez and Tyson Fury have also failed drug tests in the past. It is quite evident that boxers and athletes in general who go down that line of substance abuse fail drug tests and a ban hardly find it to get back on their feet after serving their ban. Though, in many cases, it is safe to say that many athletes do not intentionally take any drug, stimulants, or performance-enhancing medications. Well, there are some who do. There have been several stories that have emanated from time to time about various athletes being found guilty for doping. Whether or not an athlete is involved in this illegal practice intentionally, one thing is certain though, and that is the damaging of a legacy and a reputation. A once flourishing legacy or reputation could be ruined by just a single test result, and an athlete who suffers from this will end up losing the right to be called a clean athlete. Judging from this, one will still wonder why doping is common though, especially in a sport like boxing where fighters need to be maximally careful and professional. The thing is, people do wonder, how long has this been going on? British boxer Anthony Joshua said in a recent interview, it makes me wonder, how long has this situation been going on? In a way, I'm not shocked anymore in boxing. It's not only the belt you're competing for, it's leaving this game with your faculties. Boxing is a dangerous, dangerous game. Even on the side of it where anti-doping is involved, people do take it for granted. Joshua's comments do highlight the risk involved in doping and the abuse of substance by boxers. And he even goes further to open up a new angle to the discourse. And this is as regards the fighter's health. It is not only the belts, or the career, or the legacy that is put at risk with the take of banned substances, the health of the boxer or the athlete is also at risk. The health implications will always exist for every boxer or athlete involved. For Jake Paul, nothing is clear yet. Overall, the status quo remains the same ahead of the much anticipated clash with Mike Tyson. The fight can only be called off if one of both fighters tests positive for any of the banned substances or there's a voluntary withdrawal on their part. Mike Tyson's allegations are big and bold, but nothing has been confirmed yet, and if need be, tests will be carried out before he squares up with Jake Paul on July 20th. Some key figures in Mike Tyson's camp, however, fear that Paul might smartly cover his tracks before any proper investigation is carried on. According to them, the use of intravenous injections is quite common nowadays, and this could help Jake Paul clean up whatever mess he creates, and as such, a stricter and closer eye should be kept on the 27-year-old. We want a fair fight. We don't want a situation whereby someone is coming to fight on some illicit, illegal meds, a member of Mike Tyson's camp said. Jake Paul seems to have been training with some illegal stuff. We hope it doesn't give him an undue advantage during the fight. We'd like Jake to be checked for all these illegal stuff, you know, including IV. Those comments about four give a flashback to 2015 when Floyd Mayweather Jr. was reported to have violated doping rules before his fight with Manny Pacquiao. Mayweather was said to have received two intravenous injections, adding up to 750 milliliters of fluid, the day before his fight with Pacquiao on May 2, 2015, which he won by unanimous decision in Las Vegas. According to Mayweather's camp, the fluids in the injections were mixtures of saline solution and vitamins. This would not have been inherently illegal, but the quantity in that time frame could have masked another substance and would have been in violation of rules set forth by the World Anti-Doping Agency, according to experts. Mayweather was neither charged nor found guilty of any violations, and according to the United States Anti-Doping Agency, he had stuck to the rules, responding to claims that they were covering up for Mayweather. As was already publicly reported in May of this year by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, 
Mr. Mayweather applied for and was granted a therapeutic use exemption by USADA for an IV infusion of saline and vitamins that was administered prior to his May 2nd fight against Manny Pacquiao. The USADA added in a statement. According to them, Mayweather had abided by the right guidelines in order to use an IV. Meanwhile, Mayweather in his own right responded to claims by stating that he will always remain a clean athlete. Whether or not Jake Paul is a clean athlete, no one knows yet. All eyes remain focused on July 20th for the much anticipated showdown. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button. For more of the very best updates of news, moments, actions, and events, ensure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this.